Number 11, G Gabriel Martinez says, how do you answer a Catholic who uses Revelation 12 to argue Mary's queenship? Thank you for your work. You have helped me in my face so much. God bless. Love from Venezuela. Okay, boy, I, this is an issue. Um, it's not fresh in my mind. I would want to go and spend time like developing my argument so I could give you a specific, you know, these five points that are really strong. But let's just read through the text here. And um, I'll offer a few thoughts because I'm, I'm not going to have time to do that anytime soon. I'm still just obsessed with the ending of the Gospel of Mark. And I'll be obsessed with that for a few weeks still. Um, Romans, Revelation 12 verses 1 through, well, we'll see how far we read. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems, seven crowns. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the child, uh, before the woman, who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule, and the nation all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she was has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days. Then there's this fight um, and uh, Satan goes and he attacks the, the, the children of the, the woman, her other children, interestingly. Uh, the woman was given... Wait, when the great dragon saw that he'd been thrown down to the earth, verse 13, he pursued the woman who had been who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great, the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to be to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time, probably three and a half years. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the help of the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river and the dragon had, the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. Okay, the um, uh, the first thing I want to just say is there's an obvious connection where you could say this is about Mary, right? A woman gives birth to a child, right? <laughs> like that's that's like the obvious part. The child seems to be Jesus. Right, that, that that would be implied as well, but I think that the woman, and I think most commentators agree, is that the woman is more likely Israel, Israel, and this is because not just of the um, the woman giving birth, but there's a lot more going on. Let's let's look at some specifics. Okay, the woman's clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. This may harken back to Jacob, uh, Joseph, and his dream. Right about the sun and the moon and the stars all bowing down to him, right? He is to become like a, a leader for for Israel and for Israel, right? Not the nations of the world. The, this is this is about Israel. So there's a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. That this this is is Israel language, not um, Mary language. She was pregnant, was crying out in birth pains, and the and the agony of giving birth. This could be seen as Israel who has been delivering the Christ child to the nations in great agony, right, over time. And finally, Jesus comes forth. Israel's, Israel's gone through all kinds of things as, as the ones who will be the Christ-bearing nation, okay? And another sign appeared in heaven, the, the great dragon, okay? The dragon hates the woman specifically. Now, we don't know of any place where we read about, okay, we read about Herod trying to kill Jesus, we don't read about the targeting of Mary by anybody that I'm aware of in history, in scripture, um, but we do read about Satan trying to destroy the nation of Israel. Absolutely, right? We read about this for sure. And this seems to be what's going on here. It's Satan's agenda to destroy Israel because they will bring forth the child, Christ. That, I think, is a better understanding of these things. Um, the battle between uh, Satan and the woman or the attacks between on Satan and the woman after she gives birth to the, to the male child, she she goes out into the wilderness. Um, she's nourished, and then he continues to fight. He tries to put a flood out after her. I'm just scanning some of the passage here. And then she's, she's protected, and so the dragon turns and attacks her other children. That is, those who, in this case, are grafted into Israel through Christ. 
So he attacks Israel and then he attacks other believers because God's protecting Israel. That, that's how I understand the passage. Let me just say this. Um, the, uh, the teaching that some would give here that she's the queen of heaven doesn't connect well with the passage in my opinion. The stars and the moon and the sun connect more to Joseph and language about Israel as a whole, not heaven. Do you catch the, the disconnect there? That language, the stars and the sun and moon. And the stuff that happens after the child, and you could say, well, that's her fleeing to Egypt and she's being, but she flees after she gives birth. She flees, not the child flees. So that doesn't make sense. It doesn't connect to this, what happened with Jesus. Oh, there we go. It connects to what happened with Israel. 